let's start using ggplot2 in R, and um, maybe we'll start with the empty cars data set. A couple things to start with. So first, you can see we first need to install the package and then um, add it to the library. We've already done that, so I won't um, take the time right now to do that. The other thing to remember is that when we kind of are using ggplot, there's there really three aspects to the plot. There's the data, the aesthetics, and geometry. And as we kind of start using it in R, you have to kind of always remember, do we have all three of these together? So I guess let's just get started. Let me just make this a simple variable so I can not worry about messing up empty cars. And empty cars. And um, we can start with base R, where we did, let's go with MPG. So this is a histogram that we've previously been able to create. So I guess the first thing we can do is start trying to recreate that. So we can do a ggplot. The data will be MTC or the empty cars data set. The aesthetics will say the x equals MPG because that's what we found on the x-axis. And then we say the geometry is a histogram. And bins equals five. It's good. It's close. It actually looks worse because it's all um, like one shade, so it doesn't actually look quite as good. But let's try to improve that a little bit. Um, Set so the colors, for example. And the color equal black, and the fill equals white. There we go. It's starting to look a little bit better. So that kind of looks the same, except it's not quite there. We need to add one more thing, maybe. And we could store this. So as we're building up this plot, we can actually store this plot in a variable. We'll just call it call the variable g, variable g. And so if I do g, we don't actually see the difference, but it gets recreated. But I can then do g plus, um, we can add a title, for example, mpg buckets. Not tile, title. There we go. And now we have buckets. So this. It's kind of similar. Obviously, it's a little bit more work, but you have a lot more control over what the graph looks like. We can also bin width equal, I don't know, 10. So here's bin width. So the first question maybe I want to ask is, what do you think the difference is between um, the parameter bin width and the parameter bins? The bin width is more of a logical separation, so you can see each one of these bins is 10. So if I have the bin width equal to be two, and then I take a look, see each bin is two MPGs. If I go back here and just have bins, bins is kind of the number of bins. See, just two bins. So I can either, using ggplot, I can either create bins in terms of logical width of bucket size or number of bins. And that's, that's one of the differences between that and the base um, R package, where I just kind of basically could define the number of buckets or number of bins. So that kind of is another example of how you have more control using ggplot as compared to um, the base R package. Now let's do some line charts. That, uh, maybe we'll build up some new data. So I'm gonna use this data. I'm not gonna type it in, but I'll kind of just run through each line of code. So now we have a data set that we've defined basically how long it takes to get to New York City, maybe from Syracuse to New York, for example, in terms of hours, two different weeks, two different times. We have for each day of the week, we have um, whether it's week one or week two, and we've kind of put this all together. And we can actually tie this all together into a data frame. So I'll do that. Actually create a data frame. 
we'll have a day time to New York City. New York City too. Yeah, why is that not right? Well, maybe it means ink. So here's one way to think about it, right? So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now we've got the times in the different ways. Now we can do a ggplot. Of course, we're going to do a ggplot, you're saying. So let's see how we should do this. The aesthetics this time, x equals day, and y equals time to New York City. And we'll have group equals one. So what we have here is um, we have a simple line of just the first week, because that's what it is, time to New York City. We could have done it as a any kind of graph, but here we did it as a line chart. And we can kind of enhance this and store it. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to store it in a variable called g. We're going to have ggplot. We could change the um, attributes here. So instead of just doing a line, we can say color equals red, for example. Line type equals dashed. And size, or the thickness, equals 1.5. There we go. So we can kind of get a feel for kind of again attributes that can define the picture, the, the graph, in different ways. How about if we did point? Will this work? Let's generate an error. What do you think this will do? You can see that it actually just added another layer, another layer of geometry to the graph. So in that way, um, I'm building up the, the chart and I can kind of add more to that. So I, instead of just doing a point, I can kind of put attributes to the point. I can say the color equals black. Oops, sorry. Color equals black. I can say the size of the circle is bigger than the fill. Let's just leave it at that. And rather than black, because it's already black, I'll change it to blue. See, and now we can see over here, bigger blue circles, because that's how I kind of configured. And I can keep going. I could say, um, Y label, time to New York City, and hours. There we go. So I've just changed my labels. And again, I have more control using ggplot2. It's a good way to kind of create some of these graphs. Now, I can do the, do the charts um, without, let's start from scratch. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do a ggplot. Instead of doing a line, I'll just do a point. Will that work? Yeah, it creates a scatter chart. You now the only geometry I have is the point, and I can kind of do the whole thing again with the colors and things like that. Well, be helpful if I do mess up. There we go. So it's different ways to show scatter points and line charts 
um, in different areas. Let's create a new data frame. Then we'll do some more graphing of multiple line charts. So we'll create a new data frame. And that's a data.frame. And this one is day of week, time. Remember up here, time is both of them put together in week. So now it's a slightly different type of data frame. It's kind of, we have week, so we can kind of have both lines in, in one picture. And we'll create that. So we'll create our ggplot. We give it our data set called df. Again, any could have been any data set name. Aesthetics. X equals day of week. We'll group by week. And we'll color by week just to kind of make it clear which one is which. Now we need to add a geometry. So we'll add line. I don't have to say what the Y is, so time. Let's see what this does. There we go, it actually worked, no typos. So um, we have week one, week two, and we can see how my commute from Syracuse to New York City varies from week one to week two. And I could do additional things. I could do, I can add to my plot. So I take my plot and I can say, add a Y label. Time to New York City in hours. And I can add an overall title. I don't want to spell title here. So comparing weekly times. There we go. So now I can kind of construct this a little bit more and I have my X and Y axes labeled correctly in a title and I can kind of compare against the two lines that I've created. So I think we'll stop there for, for this for this screenshot and we'll come back in a little bit and do do some more with GGplot2.